This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is Lenovo IdeaPad U260. This is Lenovo's latest IdeaPad series ultralight computer. And after the U160, which came out just about a year ago, and was an 11.6 inch machine with pretty decent specs inside, um, but a very plasticky look, consumer kind of product, it's really exciting to see Lenovo get into some serious, gorgeous design. It's a very minimalist looking computer, as you can see, it's almost like a book here, the design. And we've got ports on this side, we have the USB port, heads, headphone jack, and your wireless switch. On the back, you have vents over here, which are partly obstructed by the display lid when it's open, but reasonably effective. On the bottom, we have more vents. I'd rather see the traditional side vent for heat, but this does not get too hot, unlike some of the early U160 Lenovo's. And here we have power jack, VGA, Ethernet, HDMI, and a second USB 2.0 port. We've got rubber feet here on the bottom, and you can see a whole lot of Torx screws here. This is a sealed unit a la MacBook Air, and unfortunately it has some of the drawbacks of that design, which is the battery is sealed inside and it's not super easy to get in. If we open it up and take a look, I can tell you that if you release three of the Torx screws on the bottom, the keyboard does lift up and it gives you access to the RAM and the mini PCI slot, which is where the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card are, and there's a single DIMM slot in here. Battery lives in this area over here, and the hard drive is over here. So you can see this is one of Lenovo's lovely island style keyboards with good key separation, good key travel, nice key relief, and it's a pleasure to type on. Our only complaint is the shift key is slightly smaller on the right hand side, but it's still a reasonably good size. The trackpad is large and it's awesome. This is a glass trackpad with a rough surface to it, rough by glass standards, that is. It's smooth relative to many other things. It's wonderful to use. It's large enough to support the multi-touch gestures. You've got a scrolling section over here as well. And two fairly soft mouse buttons, which are away from the edge. Build quality, fantastic. Again, the design is, is really unusual. And this is available in clementine orange and mocha brown if you get the Core i5. If you get the i3, you only get the mocha option. Now the mocha brown is kind of more of a bronzy look, just like this orange isn't a bright signal orange, it's kind of a tasteful thing. And the surface is a soft touch grippy thing that exceeds even your traditional ThinkPad for grippability. The surface here is a leather texture pad. It feels wonderful on the hand as well. So this is definitely a premium experience which you would expect for about $1,000. Inside it's no slouch, it has a Core i5 ULV processor 1.33 gigahertz, turbo boosts up to 1.86 gigahertz. That is the ultra low voltage version of the i5, but it's still quite capable and it does about a 3850 on PC Mark Vantage benchmarks. The display obviously is gloss black on the bezel here, but this is a matte main display and this is the first 12.5 inch notebook computer. So this sits between the 11 and 13 inch MacBook Airs, and it's great for those of you who think that the 11.6 inch netbook display is just a bit too small, text is hard to read. This takes care of that problem. The resolution is 1366 by 768, which is fairly standard for this size machine. So now that we have this booted up, you can see the 12.5 inch display matte in action here, and even through video you can probably tell it's very color saturated, and it has pretty good brightness too, max of 20, 220 nits brightness. It does have an ambient light sensor. I find it a little too twitchy and I disabled it, but some of you folks may like it. Otherwise, it's the usual FN key adjustments with the on-screen indicators, which every notebook manufacturer should have. Don't know why they don't, though. Up here, you have a VGA webcam. We've got indicator lights here for hard drive activity, wireless, and this is the Lenovo One Key Recovery over here. Lenovo bloatware, not too bad on this machine. Performance, quite good if you're doing productivity apps, Office, Photoshop, even runs just fine on this, all web applications. And the larger screen size is good for those of you who even do some light development work and are looking at a lot of text all day. Drawbacks for this machine, again, is its copying of the MacBook Airness. It's very hard to actually get to your parts other than getting to the RAM slot over here and the mini PCI slot. 
And these days, netbooks even have three USB ports. This guy only has two, and there is no SD card slot. Gee, that's, that's kind of surprising for a 12.5-inch machine. There certainly is room for it here, but they haven't put that in. All right, now we're comparing this to another, in some ways, high-end ultralight. This is the Acer Aspire Timeline X1830T. This is 11.6 inch, so you can compare the difference in size. It's about an inch difference, obviously, in the display. This guy is available with ultra-low voltage Core i5 and i7s. This happens to be the i7. This does almost a thousand points better on the benchmark. This has three USB ports, by the way, too, and an SD card reader. So this is more about performance. This is more about quality and style and the larger screen that's easier on the eyes. This guy, of course, has the usual Acer gloss display, which has pretty good viewing angles and, and very good brightness. doesn't have quite the color saturation of the matte display. This is a bit tarring on eyes if you're in a bright location. You can see the difference in the keyboard design, too, with the typical Acer flat, non-isolated, island-style keyboard. And most people do prefer the island kind of keyboard. Smaller trackpad here. So this guy is a couple hundred dollars cheaper, about two hundred dollars less. And again, th this is more about raw computing performance in a really small 11.6 inch form factor, both less than an inch thin, whereas this is about quality style and it's perfect for those of you who like looking a little bit different from everybody else. We'll take a look at the lids. Right there, this has a nice textured kind of diamond pattern. And it's a nice looking notebook in itself, and we'll do a separate review of the timeline soon as well. Lenovo runs for about three and a half to four hours on a charge. Obviously you can't swap a new battery into the Lenovo since it is sealed inside. It charges very quickly. and has an extremely compact charger. This guy is good for about six to seven, sometimes even eight hours on a charge, which is miraculous. Lenovo's fan does run a bit more often. They run at about the same temperature. It runs about 41 degrees. Celsius, which is reasonably cool actually, but they're a little conservative with their fan settings. You'll notice it mostly when it's plugged in and it is a little bit noisy. So that's the Lenovo IdeaPad U260. You see from the side profile what it looks like here, and then attractive certainly. It comes with a 320 gig, 5400 RPM hard drive, and 4 gigs of DDR3 RAM. Those are not customizable. It's funny because Lenovo's site usually offers a whole lot of customization, and this one is pretty much you buy it as they offer it with those specs. It has Intel, integrated Intel HD graphics, and Wi-Fi 811BGN, as well as Bluetooth. There is no 3G option. You can, of course, use USB-based 3G dongles and 4G dongles. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and visit our website for the full review.